Investigate and explain that when a force is applied to an object but it does not move, it is because another opposing force is being applied by something in the environment so that the forces are balanced. Observe balanced and unbalanced forces. Forces are balanced. There's no motion. One force that's always acting on all objects in contact is friction. Friction opposes motion with objects that are in contact. Now the forces have become unbalanced because the jeeps are moving. Remember, friction's acting on both jeeps all of the time. Forces are balanced. There is no motion. Another force that acts on all objects all the time is gravity. Gravity is always pulling down. Gravity is pulling both jeeps down all the time. Forces have now become unbalanced because the objects are moving. And remember, gravity is always acting on all objects all of the time. Forces are balanced because there's no motion. I'm going to apply a push force from my finger, mechanical energy, and now those forces have become unbalanced because the objects are in motion. I push the blue jeep with my finger and that push is transferred as a pull through the string to the green jeep. A pull force is now acting on the green jeep. Recognize balanced and unbalanced forces. Now I've got two real jeeps back to back and you'll see that there's a strap between the two jeeps. Right now it's loose. The jeeps are just sitting there in a moment. We'll start moving one of the jeeps and the strap will tighten up. There we go, it's moving and the strap tightens up and you can see that the green jeep jumped forward as the strap tightens up. When it's tight, the forces are balanced for an instant, there's no motion, and then there's a very sudden quick motion and the forces become unbalanced. It's during that unbalanced part when there's motion that forces are unbalanced because the two objects are moving. Now we'll reverse. I'll pull the orange Jeep back. You can see that the strap is tight between the two Jeeps and I'll slowly pull it back. Forces are unbalanced because there is motion. Then the Jeeps are going to come to a stop again and the forces will be balanced. They'll be balanced because there will be no motion. Okay, the Jeeps slowly come to a stop. You'll see that the strap between the Jeeps is staying tight. So right now, forces are balanced. Now the orange Jeep is pulling the green Jeep back. You'll see the strap is tight. There is motion. Forces are unbalanced. So that's how you tell the difference between balanced forces and unbalanced forces. If there's motion, forces are unbalanced. If two objects are pushing or pulling on each other and there is no motion, forces are balanced. Now if those two Jeeps were not strapped together and they just happened to be moving in the same direction, that would not be an example of balanced and unbalanced forces. That would just be an example of motion but because we're using the strap between the two Jeeps and we're applying the force to the Jeeps, that's showing an example of balanced force. And again, here's that balanced force because the Jeeps are not in motion. And I'll get out and I'll pull on the strap here and show you how tight it is. There's that strap between the Jeeps. And you can tell that it's tight. Now I moved my Jeep a little bit, I moved the green Jeep a little bit, that was an unbalanced force. Remember, 
when a force is applied to an object, whether it's a push or a pull, and the object doesn't move, forces are in balance. It's only when the objects move that forces have become unbalanced. Measure and record forces. We can measure force using a tool called a spring scale. You might be familiar with this if you go fishing. You use it to hang your fish on the hook, and then that will tell you how much the fish weighs. On this side, you'll see that it measures grams. So I can take the hook of the spring scale, hook it onto the Jeep, and then by hanging the Jeep from the hook, I can find the mass of the Jeep. The spring scale is not terribly precise. It's not super accurate. This measures a mass of about 120 grams. You'll see the Jeep hanging from the hook there. So about 120 grams. And if I turn the spring scale around to the other side, you'll see the unit of measure. There's grams on this side. If I flip it around, here's the unit of measure for force, N which stands for Newtons. We measure force in units of Newtons. If I hang the Jeep from the spring scale, just holding it, you'll see that the force required to hold that is about 1.3 Newtons. 1.3 Newtons just hanging the Jeep there. And you'll see the measurements, one, two, three, four, five, as we go along. So this tool, a spring scale, is used to measure force in units of Newtons. Now, what I wanted to do was to pull the Jeep and measure the amount of force needed to pull the Jeep in units of Newtons, but I found out when I pulled the Jeep that because the wheels made it so easy to roll, the spring scale wasn't actually measuring anything. It didn't measure any force needed to pull that Jeep. So I had to come up with another way to do that. Let's take a closer look at the scale. You'll see that when I start to pull, that doesn't even, the spring doesn't even move, the Jeep moves, so it takes hardly any force to do that. So that wasn't going to work. I couldn't show you the amount of force, balanced force, required to pull the Jeep. So I had to come up with a new idea, some other way to show you that unit of balanced force, those balanced forces up until motion happened, because all this showed was unbalanced forces. So this demonstration didn't work. It's only showing unbalanced force, and sometimes that's the way science goes. So we go back to the drawing board and come up with a new idea. So I've got a, a paint opener here that I can take the largest steel sphere that I have and drag across the table. Put that steel sphere on there, and here we go. Now, when I start to pull the spring scale, half a Newton doesn't move. One Newton, one and a half, two Newtons, three and a half Newtons. The spring is stretching, but the sphere itself is not moving. Forces so far are balanced. There's no motion happening. So we have balanced force. And this is what I wanted to show you. Half a Newton balanced, one Newton balanced, two and a half, two two and a half, three, three and a half. And now at four Newtons, four and a half Newtons, there we go. Now the steel sphere starts to move. Now we have unbalanced force. How much force does it take to move that steel sphere? Four and a half Newtons. Now I wanted to find a mass of that, so I go back over to my digital scale, which is much more accurate than the spring scale, and I couldn't find the mass of this using a spring scale anyway. 2,325 grams. 2,325 grams. So now I can show balanced and unbalanced forces using the largest of my steel spheres by placing it on this sled and measuring the amount of force needed to pull that steel sphere using a spring scale. No Newtons, forces are balanced. One Newton, forces are balanced. All the way up, two, two and a half. There's no motion, the sphere hasn't started moving yet. 
at about four, four and a half newtons. Friction breaks, the sphere starts to move. I can pull it across the table with four newtons of force. That is an example of balanced and unbalanced forces. Motion has occurred. Investigate and explain that when a force is applied to an object but it does not move, it is because another opposing force is being applied by something in the environment so that the forces are balanced. We'll begin by finding the mass of the model Jeep in each of these steel spheres using a digital scale. By itself, the model Jeep weighs 118 grams. With sphere 1, mass number 1, 614 grams. Mass number 2, the Jeep and the mass together, weigh 1,380 grams. And mass number three, the largest of the steel spheres, together with the Jeep, weighs 2,443 grams. Next, we'll find out the amount of force needed to pull each of those Jeep and mass setups. The model alone requires almost zero force. This scale doesn't even measure the amount of newtons required to move just the model because it's on wheels. That makes work easier. You'll see as we pull it across the table, we're not registering any newtons on this scale. Next, we'll add mass number one. We'll pull that across the table using the spring scale. And this one does show a little bit of force required. There's more mass on the Jeep this time. So we are using some force to pull the Jeep and the mass across the table. With mass number one, we're actually measuring about 0.1 newtons. 0.1 newtons of force. Next, we'll move to mass number two. Add the mass to the Jeep. We'll pull the Jeep and the mass across the table using the spring scale to measure the amount of force needed to move this mass and the Jeep. And you'll see that with mass number two, we're actually getting about, it's bouncing around a little bit. Let's call that 0.2. And with mass number three, the largest of the steel spheres, we should get more newtons of force required to move this mass across the table. And it looks like for mass number three, again, it's bouncing around a little bit. Let's call that 0.4 newtons of force. <laughs> 